We are about to begin another episode of the Prosperident webinar series. From their unique perspective as dentistry's embezzlement experts, Prosperident's team brings you information you will not find anywhere else. Now sit back and relax while Prosperident's Amber Weber, Wendy Askins, and David Harris address the issues that are important to you. Hello, friends. I am so honored to be the first Prosperident representative to tell you Happy New Year. I hope you're all doing well, and thank you so much for joining us this evening. My name is Wendy Askins, and I'm a supervising examiner for Prosperident. My co-hostess is Amber Weber, and she's also a fellow Texan of mine. Uh, Amber is a senior fraud examiner. And then we are joined by our fearless leader and CEO of Prosperident, David Harris from Halifax, Canada. We're thrilled that you have joined us this evening to go full steam ahead in 2021. And we've even got a special guest joining us this evening. So Amber, why don't you get us started? I think you're muted, honey. Okay, there we go. Thank you for the great introduction. Tonight, our webinar is going to last about one and a half hours. Uh, please submit your sub uh, questions through Zoom. We will answer them as we can, and we will also uh, try to hold some for the end and answer as many as time permits. Um, this session will be recorded. So if you're not able to stay for the entire webinar, please know it'll be available tomorrow um, on YouTube. And as always, our good friends uh, at Altura Paradonics are helping us provide uh, PACE continuing edu education credit for your attendance tonight. So we wanna give a special thank you to them. So we hope you can stay for the entire session, but if you can't, then you know, you'll be able to view it later. So moving forward, we wanna talk about why are we doing this? Okay, so full steam ahead, 2021. We wanna give you some, some great uh, information about moving forward this year. Uh, as a company, Prosperident is best known uh, for investigating embezzlement and we love the opportunity to help owners um, establish protective systems for their practice. So we wanna help you even if embezzlement isn't occurring. Uh, we have decades of experience and all of our great experts, we come from many different uh, fields of dentistry. So we have a lot of background and expertise that we can we come together and help you as practice owners, people who work in practices, people who have interaction with dental practices. We want those practices to be as safe and protected as possible because we truly do love the field of dentistry. Um, our background and experience with many different types of specialists and different people in the dental industry has given us so many opportunities and windows into hundreds of successful practices annually. So we want to be able to deliver as much information to those of you that we haven't got to work with yet. All right, Our we've, web got, we've got a few more webinars coming up. Um, and the way that this works is that you're automatically registered for them if you're here. So. On February 15th, we've got easy steps to your best hire ever. And we're gonna talk about how to find that person who's exactly right. Um, and then March 25th, we're gonna go back to school a little bit and we're gonna talk about honing your practice owner skills. And I think that one of the things that's gonna be a key component because this is a question we get asked all the time is how do I monitor the, the financial activities of my front desk? So we're gonna go back to school and do a little bit of that. And now let's introduce our special guest for tonight. His name is Kirk Barrett. Uh, Kirk is uh, a lot of things. He's uh, the CEO of, uh, of a company called Act Dental that, that provides uh, terrific consulting to people. He also hosts something I've been privileged to be on a few times called the Best Practices Show. And uh, I, I, I did an episode with Kirk the other day and it was fun. We just laughed and uh, carried on and it, it was a ball. So we are so honored to have him with us today. 
he's got amazing ideas about how to make your practice the best it can be. And uh, I really look forward to what he has to say. So let's talk about the state of the world that we're in right now. You know, this past year was so bad. I just feel like I'm blessed, even if I'm alive, and I still have a roof over my head, and I have a job that I love. Um, sometimes you just have to get down to basics with gratitude and let gratitude fill your heart. But anyway, let's talk about what the ADA says the state or the financial state of dentistry is as of uh, about the middle of December. Now, the Health Policy Institute of the ADA um, conducted polling for several months last year um, after the COVID crisis began. And they actually had two parts of polling. One was the recovery and renewal polling um, for the business of dentistry, if, if that's what you want to call it. And then they also had um, a consumer poll um, asking just regular everyday uh, consumers of dentistry, how they felt about the safety of being in the dental office. And what they found out and what they published as of the middle of December is that the good news is, is that 99% of dental offices are now open. Um, a little bit less than 40 I'm sorry, a little bit less than half of the businesses reported business as usual. Um, ironically, um, as far as patient volume is concerned, endodontics and oral surgeons reported the highest patient volume. And we're going to do something a little bit different in this webinar. And since we have our guest, Kirk, what we're going to do is we're going to have a little discussion at the end of each slide so that um, we can have some other ideas about um, the points that we're trying to make. And one thing I'd like to hear is um, what you guys on the panel think about why endodontics and oral surgery happen to be like, had like the highest patient volume. That seems a little odd to me, but we'll get around to discussing that in just a moment. Anyway, um, the remainder of the practices that responded to the polling um, commented that they were about 22% down from pre-COVID patient volumes. Which honestly, if you think about what we had to go through last year as um, an industry, just being down 22% is not that bad. Um, I've heard, you know, some estimates of 40 to 50% down, but thank God it's just 22% of pre-COVID volume. Now, on the consumer side, what we're seeing is 86% of pollsters said that they had either, number one, been in a dental office since um, COVID started happening, or number two, they would have no hesitation into going into a dental office. So that's 80, 86%. So we're doing pretty good there. Um, but there are still those patients who are concerned um, with their health, about 14%, and they're gonna hold off until a vaccine is readily available to them. And then as employers and employees, what we see is that um, employment is at almost 100% of what it was uh, pre-COVID, which is awesome as well. So for our panelists, some of the questions that I have, um, and you guys can just answer randomly uh, about what you think about this. In the report, it also stated that only 1% of the practices are offering point of care rapid COVID testing. Do any of you happen to think that that's gonna be an issue for, for dentistry? Or are we gonna have to start offering that? Wendy, I think as the vaccine rolls out, that's going to get less important. Um, to me, what, what comes across from some of this is that most people rightly believe that dentistry is, is safe, you know, that they can get dental treatment. And I remember when, when COVID first flared up, you know, and you asked about the oral surgeons and the um, endodontists. And I guess my theory is they're sort of the least elective end of dentistry. Um, usually when somebody needs the endodontist, they, you know, they, they either need the endodontist or, or, or pain pills, um, you know, so 
Um, I think that's why, but I think dentistry's done a great job of reassuring the public that, you know, you're safe in, in our care. Yeah. You know, another question, oh, and I'm, I'm hope the endodontists and oral surgeons in our audience don't take offense to that, <laughs> but I totally get what you're saying. Um, another correlation that I've made, which is interesting, is um, a possible opportunity um, with the fact that um, we're almost at 100% employment, pre-COVID employment, but yet we're still at 78% patient volume. What type of opportunities do you think that's bringing? Yeah. Uh, can I chime in here just a little bit? Because I, all right, I have a little bit of a different vantage point because I think this is the greatest time ever. Now, while COVID sucked, it just did. Uh, for all of us, it, it was horrible. I'll tell you, I had a full out panic attack on March 17th, 18th, 19th. But as we came out of it, you know, the thing we've no, lo, known our whole lives is that out of adversity always comes an opportunity, you know, no matter what it is. And the people that find the opportunities do really well. Now, we used to joke as practice consultants that we could double people's production by doing this, by taking everybody out of the schedule in your practice, and then only if we sorted them in red bricks, yellow bricks, and green bricks, obviously the green ones, more productive procedures, patients you liked, you could easily just put back the green ones for the most part in no time and double your production within a month. Now, the joke was you couldn't really do that because it's too busy. Well, now you really could. So some of our best practices that had money saved, had a culture in place, had systems ready to go, they literally, and some of you listening to this, that's exactly what you did. You only called back your green bricks. You didn't call back the red bricks or the yellow. You called back the people that needed to get the dentistry done, that were great patients, and you put them only in your schedule. And you, you called us, and you're like, this is crazy. I mean, I hate wearing all this stuff, but we produce like 50% more. And I'm like, go for it. Now, so many other things in place here. You got to take this in consideration. This is the opportunity more than ever. So when you're looking at this screen and you see the averages, the last thing I'm thinking, you guys are watching a webinar on a Thursday night, okay? That makes you not average, all right? The average dentist is not watching this. They're not. They're like, they're watching reruns of The Bachelor or whatever. I have no idea what they're doing. But <laughs> the thing is, is that like the average, you shouldn't even be concerned with this. Think about this. Right now in this world, there is very little competition for discretionary dollars. Let me explain. I live in Whitefish Bay, Wisconsin. There are currently five dumpsters on my street, five, in which people are ripping up bathrooms, redoing kitchens, living rooms. None of us are spending all the money on vacations. There's no mortgage payments here in this town yet, unless you want to pay your mortgage, you know, type of a thing. So people have cash to spend right now. And it's an awesome opportunity. Now that's going to go away. That's why I talk about this, this is the window. It sucks. But some of us are making lemonade at incredible rates. Now, here's the other thing. If you had a large team of like 15 people, you probably thought to yourself, you know, two of them, I'm not sure about. This is your opportunity. Furloughing people is never fun. It sucks, period. But people that were on the fence, you're like, I don't know. It was your opportunity to thin the herd to only the people that you really wanted to be there. And they're like, I don't know why, but we can produce just as much with these people than we did with two more. How did that happen? We actually had addition by subtraction here. So, you know, I think this is only going to last for so long. The other thing we're noticing, which you guys aren't probably going to talk about, is the DSOs are struggling because they couldn't come back as fast as the private care practitioner. Some of the DSOs in our town still haven't opened to full capacity, which presents an incredible opportunity to the private practitioner. This is the time and the heyday to do it right now. This is going to go away. But like, like everything, the reason you're an entrepreneur is you made an opportunity. And I would just say this, wherever you're at, you can look at it two ways. There's nothing here or there's a lot here. And that's the growth mindset. So, um, I don't know. I'll be quiet for a little bit, but I just tell people, you know, if you're going to moan to me, let's moan for a minute and then let's get to work and make something happen. Well, let me add one more thing to the, the, the very profound things that, that Kirk just said. 
Um, you know, when, when you look at the slide and you see that average patient volume is down about 22%, most of that is more deferral than it's never going to happen. In other words, people's need for dental treatment in general doesn't go away. And if they didn't get that treatment in 2020, they still need it and they're going to catch up in 2021. So I'll just kind of pile on to what Kirk said. You know, you have a combination right now of people with discretionary dollars and postponed dentistry. And yeah. if, you, if you think about this in, in the positive light, that's a great place to be. Right. Now I'll confess, like I'm actually a little scared. I spend so much money on DoorDash and all these things. Like we are spending money, like our biggest expense is food. And like, that's going to go away too. You know, we're just, you know, it's crazy, but I wake up every day. I got money in my account. It's never been like flying out so slowly. So, and I think the rest of the world is like that too. And David, let me just pe pile on that too. People think dentistry is going to dry up or go away. No, it is not. The single biggest problem this world has is not the economy. It's not healthcare. It's the aging population. We are getting so old so fast as a world. There are going to be people everywhere. One in three babies born today will actually live to be 100. Okay. Right now in Japan, adult diapers are outselling ch children's diapers. Now, we don't need to talk about that, but you can get a sense of the world and where it's going. People are going to, there's going to be people everywhere and they all got to do one thing. They all got to eat. My mom is 20 years older than me. When she fractures a tooth, world's coming to an end. Because when she's making lunch, she's only talking about one thing, what we're going to have for dinner. So like she goes to a dentist, he's the greatest thing in the world. So I just think, you know, dentists, we panic too much. There's so much opportunity in this world. And the coolest thing, here's the coolest thing. Come on in here. There's no rules. You can create whatever kind of practice you want. I have dentists that work three days a week. They have a financial model that supports it. They have a great life. I have most of our dentists work four days a week. You don't have to work crazy hours, crazy day. You can make the rules. And you know what's so cool? If you make the rules, it doesn't work. You can change them. The board in Halifax does not say, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. What? These hours are nuts. You can't do this. You can do whatever you want to do. How cool is that? Yeah. And, and one thing I'd like to add to um, with my experience as a hygienist and um, I, the past few months I've helped with some offices is it's quantity versus uh, quality. So I know there's a reduction in patient volume, but I feel like you have more time now to produce a little more quality, develop better relationships. And I think as an end result, I'm seeing uh, patients wanting to be more long-term patients and come back on a more regular schedule. So um, now moving forward in 2021, let's talk about full steam ahead. You know, the, the term full steam ahead comes from uh, putting steam in the boiler to get that engine rolling for, for steam engines. Um, so let's think about that direction forward. Obviously with what's happened in our world with our COVID and everything, the main thing that we focused on in the, in the country and as a world is to be safety oriented. We've talked about them this, this in the past, but the, the less contact, social distancing, this is your opportunity as a practice to take that downtime and really become safety oriented for you, your staff, your patients, you know, how you accept payments, completing all of your paperwork online. The less contact you have and interaction with paper, this is your big opportunity to have that full steam ahead culture. Um, and the other thing is, you know, no more cash. The less we can integrate and, and have that virus be um, passed along between people, th this is your big opportunity to establish that new system on being safety ori oriented and really promoting your practice that you are being safety oriented. Um, we're gonna talk about this more next month, but the other thing is this gives you opportunities to really get the team that you want, whether it's members that are already within your practice or bringing on new members as your practice grows or your team members change. So we're going to go into de detail that into detail on that next month. So definitely tune in for that. But all these areas where people are like, oh, I've got 78% less patients. These are your opportunities with your full steam ahead. Um, 
The other thing is marketing and communication makeover. Our world has really changed with COVID uh, and how we communicate. Uh, we don't have as many social gatherings. Uh, we have a mask on when we talk to patients. And so really looking at how, what can you do to set yourself uh, apart from other practices in this realm to keep those patients, to keep your patients coming in, to make yourself really stand out. And you, uh, aside from that, looking at all the little missing opportunities that even before COVID you were missing, where, where are the things, the buried treasure, you know, it's like, can you put on your pirate cap and go looking for that buried treasure and see what maybe you could have been missing, educating yourself and your team on, on how to find some new opportunities. And the main thing I, that we feel moving forward is really utilizing technology as a resource um, to be efficient and orient safe, uh, the safety that we talked about and, and use all of that as big tools for your practice uh, moving forward. Let's talk about one of my pet peeves, which is dentist websites. Um, I, I think we all know that people's buying patterns over the past 20 or 30 years have changed a lot and that, and that online research is a huge part of it. And um, there are a few things that I think a lot of dentists could do better on. The first is a lot of people kind of outsource doing their website and they end up with a generic kind of cookie cutter website. And what gets lost is their personality. Dentistry is a very intimate personal service and the people who choose to get it from you want to know a bit about you and what's important to you. And a lot of times it just, it just kind of disappears into the sort of generic wording that the, the, the company supplying your website gives you. Um, there are things that are important to you. There are things that you're passionate about in dentistry and they need to come across if your marketing is going to be effective. Um, I can't overemphasize the importance of video. Um, you know, 20 years ago, video didn't really have a place on websites because a lot of people were using dial up and it was slow and there just wasn't the bandwidth for video. Well, that's not an issue anymore. And this is the chance you have to put your personal stamp on things to make your personality emerge and to do a lot to make a prospective patient feel like they belong with you. Um, and I'm just gonna show you a little piece of video um, just to show you how effective it can be. Um, this belongs to a, to a client of ours, a periodontist, um, and I've taken this from her website. The video goes on a little bit longer. I'm just gonna show about a minute of it, but just picture yourself as a patient and ask whether you would feel comfortable in this practice. I drive an hour every day over the mountains and come to work every day and I want this space to be different than a dental office. Here at the Wagner Center, our goal is to improve your life by achieving optimal oral health. Well, after the first procedure, I was very comfortable with Dr. Wagner. I was comfortable with the procedures. I don't even remember how many procedures I had. I did not hesitate coming into the office at all. The level of care she offers is just phenomenal. I'm different because I connect with my patients and I listen to them, I hear what they're saying. And so based upon that, I can come up with a treatment plan that's individualized for them that allows them to be able to achieve their goals of being healthy and having a healthy smile. I had no questions when she was done with me. She answered everything. It's important to have a really good leader and good leadership, but without having the team that follows and, and believes in our mission statement, we don't have anything. The team, they're amazing. They, they just make me feel so comfortable. I can talk to them about anything. Now, that wasn't an expensive video made by a Hollywood producer. You know, they, they spent a little bit of money on it, but I think that is so effective. And again, you feel like you know Dr. Wagner and when you decide to get your mouth done at $40,000, uh, from, from a periodontist, you feel good about it. Um, just taking this one step further, uh, the picture on the screen, I'm guessing most of you have seen somewhere. This is a stock photo 
And it is in all kinds of places. In fact, I, I did a Google image search on this photo and it came up in over 150 dental practices. Um, and the question we have to ask ourselves is why the heck are we using a stock photo when we have a real office with real people and I'm very sure an access to a camera somewhere. This again is the kind of cookie cutter version of you. And let's get the real one out there. Um, another thing that I see in a lot of websites is that it's hard to find a phone number. And the marketers have a saying about where the phone number belongs on your website. And the saying is big, bold, and above the fold. And what that means is that when somebody first goes to your website and you know there's a there's there's a certain amount of the website that your screen of your device captures, the phone number needs to be on there. It shouldn't be that you have to scroll down to the bottom of the page, which can be a long way if you're on a smartphone or or a tablet. It shouldn't be that you have to scroll all the way down to the bottom to get to that phone number. It needs to be there on whatever comes up first when somebody goes to your website. Big, bold, and above the fold. Um, the second thing in, in this bullet point is what's called a tell link. And this is a little technical thing. Um, what it does is it makes it so that if somebody is on a, a, a device with a touch screen and they touch the screen, that device will dial that number. So if somebody's on a, a a smartphone, for example, or a tablet that has that has telephone capabilities, and they touch the number, it'll dial it. Um, if you don't do that, you make it a little bit hard for people to dial that number from that device. I mean, they have to copy and paste, which um, anybody over about age 55 can't figure out, or they need to write it down somewhere so that they can enter it back into the phone. And I'm, I'm, I'm sure we, we all understand that the approach on the screen is a little bit... Uh, uh, simpler. And the final exercise on your website, and Rebecca Wagner, the periodontist whose video you saw, did this beautifully, what's called social validation. In other words, as consumers, we're very influenced by what people think. Um, Amber knows a lot more about this than me, so I'll let her talk. Yes, definitely. Um, so the true definition of social validation is when individuals follow or conform to the actions of others within a group. So I think the important thing to remember, especially now in 2021, is <clears throat> as a group, we've all had to be aware of our surroundings, uh, our safety and everything like that. So this has become very, very important in where people are going to go eat dinner, where they're going to go to the dentist, who they're going to choose for the doctor. Everything's become about as a group, who who do they want to choose out of the group? Uh, my my experience growing up, I grew up on a cattle ranch in Wyoming, so um, you know it's all about herd instinct, and so that I, I grew up in that environment where, as as a group, whatever your group of cattle or your group of um, livestock, they would go where they felt it was the safest, the safest. Um, they could eat, they could drink, and, and life was happy for them. So we have to look at social validation kind of in that perspective. I know that's a very simplistic way to put it, but if we really look at the true statistics, 87% of research begins online before somebody purchases anything. So, you know, a lot of us shop on, online for on Amazon, Walmart, different things like that. I don't know about anybody who's attending, but before I buy something on Amazon, I always look at the reviews and I want some feedback on it. So 87% of the population, we're gonna look online before we purchase or we choose to come to you as a dentist or I, I choose to go get my hair done at this salon. Uh, so we gotta remember those, those are true statistics that have increased in our society. 92% of those um, are trust recommendations, other types of advertising. So realistically, as a society, we're really researching and figuring out where we feel the most safe and where we're gonna be feel like we are um, concerns or, or what we're gonna have as a service is gonna be the most trusted. So those are big statistics that we ha you have to remember when you're trying to accomplish this within your practice. Um, 
as I said earlier, there's 10 online reviews before making a decision. So if I'm looking for you as a dentist and you only have a couple reviews that say a few different things about you, I'm going to continue to research and, and really look into where I get the most feedback from you. Definitely from word of mouth from other people who went to your practice, but you want to make sure within the social validation that you become well-rounded. You utilize the technology, become socially valid. You have great word of mouth through your patients. And, um, you know, you've got stuff on your website, everything like that. So everything needs to flir- uh, go through your website where the minute I want to look up Dr. Jones, I can see all the information I need from him. Then I can look on other areas and, and look at reviews. And then also word of mouth. So you have to be well-rounded in, when you're thinking about social validation. I remember when I first entered dentistry, um, a lot of it was just, you know, refer your family and friends type situation. And that's what you really, you did a lot of internal marketing. That's definitely still very important. But the way we create this culture for people to see us as a society has definitely changed. Um, We have a great example. We've made it easy for people to review us. Uh, So you want to have that directly on your website also where they can go instantly uh, to a link and they don't have to directly um, make it difficult. There's definitely software out there that we'd recommend you look into, for instance, uh, BirdEye that can help help you facilitate uh, getting better reviews and all of that. So you need to really look at those statistics because almost 90% of the people that are coming to your practice have found you or have researched you through technology and made sure, can I trust you? Is this somewhere that I think I'm going to be well taken care of and they have my best interest interest at heart as a patient. You know, buying patterns have really changed. Um, 25 or 30 years ago, word of mouth meant exactly that. Now, and Amber used the phrase a minute ago, word of mouth means um, reading online what people say. And the statistic here, Amber, that stands out to me is the, the one right in the middle, that 92% of people trust non-paid recommendations much more strongly than other advertising. And when we see Dr. Wagner's video, and I'm, I'm just thinking back to when she put her hand on the patient's shoulder, so clearly this is a pre-COVID video. Um, but when we saw that, you know, she made a point of including some patients who had very good things to say about her, and that's, that's the most credible part of that video. Right. Can I add a couple of things? Like, this is so good. I'm so glad you guys are here because obviously you've already known this. If you're around the Prosperity Group, it's a sharp group of people. I've never met Dr. Rebecca Wagner, but people always say the secrets of photography or video is not the words, it's, not, it's the eyes. So, like, here's what I would say about that. I already know she's successful. I don't even need to go to the practice because the eyes tell the whole story. You can't get team members to look like that in the eyes by asking them. They either have it or they don't. And I really think that's an important thing. You use the words in the previous slide, your personality gets lost. I think the most important thing, I'll tell you guys a little little story. 10 years ago, I was super stressed out trying to build this company. I was doing everything fancy. I made every mistake you could have ever, I've wasted more money in marketing than anybody I've ever met. We had a conference and a guy by the name of Chris Savage from a company called Wistia came out. Look him up. He's awesome. He runs a company that does over $32 million a year. It's just a little video company. I had him come out. I'm like, you're a genius. I go, can you speak at our conference? So he's speaking. And of course, I have him over. I have sushi across from my office. And I go, can you come over to my office? I want you to help me with marketing. He's like, I'd love to. He's like 30 years old. He's a multimillionaire. YouTube has offered to buy his company for an insane amount of money. I would have said years, years ago, he's like, Kirk, I don't need the money. I'm like, who the hell are you? This is so great. I loved him. And I explained my whole business plan for half an hour. He goes, this is too hard. I'm like, you're telling me. He's like, Kirk, stop, 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 stop. You're making marketing way too hard. Do you want the secret to marketing? I'm like, yes. He goes, listen to me. I go, what? He goes, the secret to marketing is always talk about what you care about. I'm like, that's it? He goes, spend the rest of your life talking about what you care about. Because when you talk about what you care about, it's going to attract other people that care about the same things. Your least favorite people, and you guys know this as a dentist, your least favorite people, we don't line up. You're trying to talk to them about something, they don't care. 
They don't have the same values as you. The part of it starts with core values. Now, I joke. I wear this shirt almost every single day. It's the core values of our company. And I've been through hell and back. I actually, I'm 50 now, and I feel like I'm one of the Avengers. I, my kids made me watch the Avengers. I'm not even the big, but when Robert Downey Jr. takes that battery pack, I feel like I'm a superhero when I put this on. Here's why. It's everything that matters. Nothing else matters. So when it comes to what you say in your marketing, on your website, people try to get too tricky about this. They try to come up. They try to spend all this time and energy being somebody they're not. And it's a waste of time and it's a waste of energy. I don't know who said this, but years ago, somebody came to one of our conferences and said, there's three selves, write this down. There's who you think you are, who others think you are, and who you really are. The least amount of energy is spent with people that those three line up most. When you are just who you, everyone thinks you are and you don't have to, like, it's just easy. You are a dentist for a reason. There's something you care about that makes you happy. When you bring that to life, all this other stuff, like your website, your videos, all that stuff takes a shape you could never shape. And I'll tell you, it's fun just being you talking about what you care about. So the next time that you're in a chair or you have a patient in a chair and they don't line up, go, something's not working here. Either I'm not talking about what we're what we care about how did this person get into my life? They're not bad people. You just want to make sure you attract people that care about the same things. Yeah, definitely. Some other things to think about in terms of website and, and putting your best foot forward electronically. Um, we've all heard this expression, SEO, search engine optimization. And I don't know about you, but I get emails about four times a day from people who offer to move me up in the Google rankings and stuff. Um, there are two kinds of SEO. There's stuff called white hat. And what white hat means really is doing things that conform to the uh, expectations that Google has for your website. For example, one of the things that, that Google rewards is websites that load quickly. Uh, a site that loads more slowly will be penalized by Google. So white hat SEO involves doing the little technical stuff and it's, it's um, you know, some of it's, it's pretty picky and detail oriented, but doing the, the, the stuff that will make your website load more quickly. Google's target, by the way, is 0.2 seconds. So if your website, if the front page of your website loads more slowly than that, then you get penalized. That's what I'm talking about with white hat SEO. The other kind is black hat and black hat involves doing things to try to trick Google into rating you higher. Um, and a lot of the companies that are selling SEO really, you know, they, they claim to understand what Google's secret formula is. I will tell you that they don't and that Google's formula changes very quickly and that Google is, is continually policing for people who try to do this black hat stuff. So white hat is a great idea. It's a, it's a technical exercise mostly with your website Black hat, save your money. Don't, don't waste your money on that. Um, the other thing about websites that um, are a, a really good thing to do is that your website should be built in something called a content management system. So, you know, there was a day when somebody who did your website had to write code. They had to, they had to write it in things like HTML and Java. Um, now there are these content management systems. They have names like WordPress and Joomla, if, if that helps you understand. Um, really what this means is that there's a program that writes the code for your website and you can, you can enter stuff into the content management system, you know, and it's no harder than, um, designing a document in, in Microsoft Word. Um, what having content management systems do is they make your own website, they make your own website accessible to you. There was a time 15 years ago when if I wanted to change to my website, I had to call somebody and explain to them what I wanted. And then they would do it. And a lot of times they wouldn't quite do exactly what I wanted. And then I would call them again. And, you know, this went on and on. And what it meant was that our website was very static. You know, it was such a pain in the ass to change anything that we just didn't. 
So when we got the website to have a makeover a couple of years ago, the thing I said to the web designers is the, the one non-negotiable here is once you guys are done, if I see something I want, I want to change, I want to be able to do it myself from my desktop. And that's where these content management systems come in. Cause now I can just log in. And if, you know, I see a grammar mistake on the website or something, I can fix it right then. We can post stuff easily. You know, we don't have to go to some third party to put in a basic post. Uh, you know, we, we, I, I posted one last week because Amber's involved in a case and uh, uh, the case made the newspaper. So we posted that on the website and it's something we could do ourselves. Um, I'm not saying you have to be your own webmaster, but it's sure nice to have the flexibility to make small changes or to make blog posts on your own website. And that's where these content management systems come in. Kirk, you're up. All right. So, um, you know, as far as social networking goes, <laughs> I like this about as much as you do. Now, um, I feel like I'm kind of in the middle. I'll just be honest with you. If I could take this phone and throw it in the ocean, I think I'd be a happier person. And I recently watched Social Dilemma. So if any of you guys have seen that movie, it makes you want to vomit into a, a you know, a plastic bag because now I know what their game is on the other side. But I also think it's an inevitable part of the future. So when I see people do really well, here's what I see what people do best when it comes to social networking. Really what they do is their people are their best marketing whether it be patients or team members. So don't ever lose sight of that. Your single greatest marketing asset is not billboard. It's not your website. It's not social media. Those are important. Don't get me wrong. But it stems from your people. When your people say, darling, they say, honey, I'm so glad you came here. You're going to meet an incredible dentist back there. She's not only a great dentist, but she's an even better human being. That takes on more power than anything a social post could ever make. Now, I'll tell you, it's also fun taking a little video of that same team member talking about why she loves working in the office. Because when you see that and you feel it on social media, it's powerful. Our best practices, even the young ones, young dentists getting started, they're just expressing themselves in a fun positive way because while people can like you and trust you they got to get a sense of wow these people are authentic i just honestly feel like there's a crap detector that everyone has and we've downloaded the latest software and i'm always cautious of people who are like not authentic um actually somebody called me and tried to get my business like yesterday and I was like, tell them my story. And they didn't even really listen to what I said. And then they went to pitch. I'm like, did you hear anything I said? And they're like, no, well, he, we, we can. I'm like, mm, I don't know. So I feel like I'm when all things are equal, we want to do business with our friends. Even when they're not equal, we still want to do business with our friends, people we like, trust, and value. So I think once you get that piece in place, anything you express yourself whether it be in social media or YouTube. I've seen young dentists just shoot little amateur videos and post them on YouTube from questions that patients ask and they're authentically answered. It's powerful. So when you talk about video, it, it's true. Video works. It's weird, but it works in ways that you'll never really understand. So, um, and it, I, I really feel like the social media pieces also like I said, an un inevitable piece of the future, but it's a game that's going to be changing a lot. I don't even know how to TikTok. My kids are TikToking every day. I think it's crazy, but that's how people are communicating. I try this. Ask your children that have phones, when was it the last time they actually used it to make a phone call? That'll blow your mind. My daughter's like 45 days ago. They don't use them for phones. They use them to communicate differently. It just is what it is. Um, but I would say the, big, the biggest piece is however you express yourself, don't be showing cartoons of teeth out of the mouth. Show something that matters. Something that matters to you, matters to the practice, or matters to patients. Yeah. There's one great tip <clears throat> that, I'll, that I'll mention because I, I think that was a point I put on the slide. Um, this tool is called Buffer. And what Buffer lets you do is it lets you take the same content and post it to different social media. So, you know, you can, you can set something up in Buffer and then post it to Facebook and to Instagram and to Twitter. 
You can also set up time posting. So if you have a staff member doing your social media, they can uh, sit there for an hour at the beginning of the month and kind of set up the whole month's postings more or less. Um, it just it just breaks the back of, of the workload of maintaining different social media. And sadly, I think at, at this point, you really need to be on multiple social media, you know, and you can see on the on the slide, Facebook users are predominantly over 40. Um, Instagram is millennials, TikTok is younger people. You know, you, you, it, assuming you wanna reach all audiences, you have to be in multiple platforms. I'm sure you all feel the same way I do. Whenever somebody says to me, oh, there's a great new social media um, that's emerging, I just groan because I want that like, um, you know, like I want five wisdom teeth. Yeah, I'm still on MySpace, but nobody's responding to any of the things I'm posting. <laughs> I, I didn't even know MySpace was still around. Um, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, it's a it's it, it's an evil but a necessary one. Absolutely. And, you know, I think I think every business owner, and I'm sure most of the audience feel the same way. They just kind of wish this all would go away. It's not going to. Yeah. And David, I want to piggyback on that. Buffer is an incredible service. These aggregators are awesome. There's Agora Pulse. You've got Hootsuite. A tool like Buffer is great because not only can you post, you can also put all of the responses in one place. It's a mobile yeah. app. So you don't have to jump from things to things. You can literally have a team member monitor one source through mm -hmm. Buffer, the in and the out, which is so super time consuming for the most part. Yeah, I mean, that's a good way to put it. Really what it does is it condenses all of the different social platforms you're in, you're on really down to one that you can, you can work with. Absolutely. Uh, so it's, it's awesome. If you haven't, if you haven't uh, gotten whoever's doing your social media into that, you should. Yeah. So this is something that's near and dear to my heart. Um, one of uh, talking about the buried treasure in your practice. So, you know, with COVID and the downtime, there's probably little, thing, little things that you could be looking for. Going back to what Wendy talked about, uh, we have a 78% patient reduction in um, patients coming in, but our staff members are still at 98%. So one of the biggest things, because I was a practicing hygienist for 15 years, is find your buried treasure in your hygiene. So if you don't have a consistent busy hygiene schedule is going to overflow to your doctor's schedule. And even though people are nervous to come in, 14% of our population is nervous to come in, utilize your team to really get that hygiene, the foundation of your practice, get it really up and running. Uh, because 30% of that production of your hygiene needs, needs to come from hygiene for your dentist to stay busy. So this is one of the biggest things that's near and dear to my heart. Um, is to making sure high, it starts with hygiene. Get your patients educated, educated. Use your technology. Use your your staff to reach out to your patients and really find the missing opportunities. Even people who n didn't necessarily just miss their appointment during COVID, reach out to those who have you haven't seen for a few years and get them in here and, and educate them on here's the things that we've done to make sure you're you're safe with what's going on with the virus. We instilled paperless contact. We've we've done all of these things. So that's the biggest buried, buried treasure and hidden opportunity that I think as a practice you can find. The other thing is uh, same day dent dentistry opportunities. People are gonna be a little bit nervous to take more time off work when they need uh, more treatment done. And Wendy, I know you have uh, a lot of firsthand knowledge in the orthodontic world about this. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's interesting to me um, we've been doing same day starts in orthodontics. I mean, si since the nineties, <laughs> um, that's how long I've been in dentistry, um, where, you know, the new patient comes in that day, um, there, if it's an easy case, it's diagnosed, um, records are taken, financial agreements are signed, um, and braces are put on the same day. It's called same day start. And I've often wondered, um, why we don't do that in general dentistry. Um, yes, the semantics of it is a little bit different and our business model is different, but it's possible on both ends. Definitely. Yes, and, and I think a lot of people, like I said, 
are nervous to come in and if they don't have to take as many trips to you and you can do as much dentistry that is possible for them. I've seen this firsthand in some practices uh, the last couple of months because I've been in some practices. Patients really appreciate that opportunity. Um, if you have the time and the availability to try to do more for them where they don't have to miss work again, they can come back, that you've created that safe environment um, for, for a longevity purpose, you're really going to get a lot of uh, good feedback, that good social validation from being able to do that for patients uh, when time allows and when it permits. Yeah. Um, the other great thing you need to look at that uh, you're to, to fit, find the hidden opportunities, um, patients without scheduled appointments. So overdue treatment plans, you have more downtime with your staff, really research, um, okay, we're going to work on hygiene, but there's other things that of uh, patients that we talked about, maybe they need a crown, maybe they need a root canal, uh, try, try to get them back in and use that time to educate them and get those patients who you missed during the COVID world and even pre-COVID world uh, to come in there. Um, this also integrates with unfilled treatment plans, um, making sure you're going through and making sure it's valid and use your team, create lists, have, have fun little uh, events with your team and say, hey, uh, let's call this many patients and if we, we can get some uh, overdue treatment plans in here, we, we get a prize as a team. So I've seen some offices doing that. Um, and if your hygienists have good downtime, you know, as a hygienist, because I practiced for 15 years, we build great relationships with patients. So even as utilize that hygienist to use that time to reach out to those patients and, and re-communicate, use that relationship, establish more trust, um, you know, so it, it gives your hygienist a really good opportunity to reach out to patients and continue to build that relationship so that as time goes on, those patients know, you know, Amber or Jill or whoever their hygienist is took the time to reach out to me and say, how have you been doing? I haven't seen you for a while. I'd love to bring you in. I'd love to check um, on, make sure everything's stable and healthy. Um, do you have any questions about what this visit will be like when you come to see me? So as a hygienist, use those hygienists and, and use that as an integral role so they can reestablish that relationship. They haven't seen that patient for a while. They haven't talked to that patient for a while. It doesn't all have to be hands-on preventative work that they're doing to keep their schedule full and build a great hygiene program back up. Um, and the other thing uh, is utilize technology. There's so much great technology out there that'll help you find all these little hidden treasures um, so that you can be more efficient with your team and your practice. Okay, I, I'm going to utilize technology. How many people are really overdue for their recall? How can we contact them? We have way, several different mo uh, models to contact them, text, email, phone calls. So really look at the software and the technology that's available to you and research what you think is going to fit you and your team the best so that you can find all this uh, hidden opportunity and get it in priority and, and set goals. You know, it's great to have all these um, opportunities, but start setting goals. How many, how many people a day are we going to contact? How are we going to measure this? Let's try to get this many um, unscheduled treatment plans in. You know, and, and like I said, ha have a, a really fun, make it a fun event with your team so that at the end it's, it's not just like a strategic statistical thing. It's, it's something fun and rewarding for your team, a, a big sense of accomplishment. Amber, I might uh, say a little bit more about uh, some of the technology stuff that you, you okay. uh, mentioned there. You know, we, I think we all should realize that practice management software, and, you know, we're talking about Dentrix or EagleSoft or Open Dental or OrthoTrack um, or uh, OMS Vision, um, they're all there to do the basic stuff, to record treatment, to um, keep track of how much patients owe you to keep the appointment book, things like that. Uh, most of them don't do a really good job though of generating what I'll call management level information. In other words, the stuff you need to, to run the practice and uh, spot the opportunities. And that's where these add-on companies, and I've mentioned a couple here, but there are, there are lots of other ones as well. Um, that's where the companies that sell add-on software really shine. So 
if you want to find out, for example, uh, if you if you want to generate a list of patients with phone numbers uh, who are patients of the practice and have been in in the past two years, let's say, and don't have an appointment booked with you right now, that's where these guys are fantastic. Or you want to find the unfilled treatment plans. Um, they've really made it their business to take the information that's in your practice management software and harvest it in a way that you can use. So if, if you're not using add-on software, it's a really good time to have a look at it because it will come through your basic information and just find all kinds of opportunities that you didn't know were there. Totally agree with that. So, hey, Amber, um, this slide. So if you guys have listened to this webinar, this slide, you should change the title of this slide from buried treasure to mountains of gold. Cause like this, if you were waiting for uh, what you have listed here, Amber, there's probably a million dollars or more of opportunity. Some of you might be thinking, well, how do I grow my practice? Okay. Take a screenshot of this slide, please for yourselves. Cause this is literally a phenomenal treatment plan. And let me just say this, it all starts with hygiene. Totally agree. I mean, every expert in dentistry now agrees that hygiene reappointments one of the single most important metrics. I could take a young dentist who doesn't know anything, and if we get their hygiene reappointment, which is people are scheduled for the next appointment during their current appointment, above 92%, they have no place to put patients in six months. You will literally call me and go, I don't know where to put these people, and I'll go, congratulations. Now you can do one of two things. You can either grow in size or you can be more selective. I like being more selective than just adding ops, but you can do whatever you want to do. Number two, same day opportunities is everybody knows that looks at metrics. That is one of the biggest opportunities. Now, I know what you're saying. Ah, I don't know. When you're subscribing to the seven most expensive words in business, which are, that's the way we've always done it, it causes problems. So showing up at a webinar like this and having your mind bended a little bit, people are learning how to do this and they're great restorative dentists and they know how to schedule it. Once you know how to schedule it, it makes total sense. You're like, I totally get it now because you were trying to take what you thought same day your dentistry was and plug it into the hole that you have and it's not fitting totally get it. So make sure you figure out how it's scheduled and then your mind will go, oh my gosh, patients without scheduled appointments. David, like you said, I love dental intel. Every practice we coach across the you know entire United States and whenever we can, wherever they are, I want them to have dental intel because I can see exactly how many patients that are active that aren't scheduled. Here's a great metric. Run a report weekly of how many patients you have that are active patients that don't have an appointment. It will freak you out, okay? You should probably have a stress test after you look at that number because you're going to see, well, I have 1,800 patients, 732 of them are active and they don't have an appointment. What a great opportunity that you put a champion on that. And you're not trying to get all of them. You're trying to take it from 762 down to 700, then to 650, then to 550. Well, then you're going to find, holy moly, our production skyrocketing and I don't have anywhere to put these people. Our largest producing practice right now that I coach, the first thing he did when COVID hit, like when he produces per month, you would just call me a liar. So I'm not even gonna tell you that. The first thing he did was he had a meeting with his team because culture is everything. It's not the money, it's the culture. Then his team members kept track of every single patient that was pulled out of the schedule. And they were diligent to put every one of them back. So make sure you've got a plan in place. And, you know, I unfilled treatment plans, no brainer. And then use of hygiene downtime. We have something called Parkinson's law that every task will expand the time you give it. <laughs> so if you have hygienists and they don't have a list of things to do while they don't have any downtime, you know what they do? They find something to fill it. And it's not what you intended for the time. People always are so busy. So make sure you, you've got a ton to do. If, if Amber came to your practice, she could come up with a list of 92 things you guys should probably get done whenever there isn't a patient here. Because when you don't have a patient, it's not no profit. It's negative profit. And so let's do something productive that fills that time. And the technology is tremendous. So totally agree. The add-on software has made our life so much better, whether it be dental intel, practice by numbers, weave, all of them are phenomenal. Sorry. I just, I feel like this slide is the home run right here. 
Love well, hey guys, things. we have a we have a question. I think it would be a great place to insert it here. Um, Elaine asked, "Are insurance companies giving breaks to get work done for the patients that were supposed to get work done in 2020?" I'm not aware of any. I think the insurance companies were just laughing all the way to the bank last year. Yeah, um, that's kind of what I think too. Right. I've been around doing this too long, so don't listen to me. I'm a little tainted. But I think they're missing a little bit of heart. You know, I don't know. I would never be one to just consistently damn insurance companies. But let's just say this. Insurance companies aren't going to have a awakening one day and go, you know what? We've been pretty bad to dentists. Let's <laughs> give them some of this back. What do you think? Should we do the right? They're not going to do that. <laughs> so yeah. I think I th and you can't spend time doing that. It's on you. I tell teenage kids, the world isn't getting any easier. You have to get better. And I tell that to dentists all over. Like, don't sit there and damn insurance companies. That's a waste of time. You spend time getting better. Here's one more thing. I applaud you for being on a great webinar like this because most people don't want to invest the time or energy. Now think about this. Your single biggest expense or cost or investment, whatever you're going to call it, it's called your team. It probably takes up 25% of your revenue going out. Here's a question for you. If you had a CBCT or a CEREC that took up 25% of your cash every year, would you get some training for it? Pretty sure you would. So why don't people invest in people? I, I would never do that. What if I spend all this money on these people and they leave? Well, I got a question for you. What if you don't spend any money on them and they stay, okay? You take the time to invest in your team, help them understand this best. Like you'll, you know, it always comes back in spades. Great idea. Definitely. All right. And, and I want to add one thing to that too, Dave, with the add on technology. Um, you know, one, one of the greatest things that I used to love is it really lets your team see how they're improving. Like if, if you compare when you first get that technology, and then a few months later, you start seeing because they're they're tracking their own metrics and and they're really paying attention to it. They'll start to your team will kind of get real excited about that when you have that add-on technology of like, wow, look at all this that we're accomplishing, accomplishing, you know. So I I think it's a great thing to research and figure out what works. You're so right. And by the way, I just want to say hi to uh, one of the attendees, uh, Dr. Chad Webb from. Medina, Ohio, who's, who's on the call. Hi, Chad. um, Chad's an orthodontist. What a, what a wonderful guy. Hi, Chad. Great to have you with us. Uh, we, we don't often do that, but uh, he's, he's the guy I think of as a friend and I'm, I'm glad to see him there. Yeah. Hi, Chad. Um, okay. So Kirk, talk about training employees. I have got the most incredible story to tell you. Like I really do try to be my most authentic self all the time, but sometimes just the devil in me is so overbearing. I can hardly keep her quiet. And this happened to me the other day. I was trying to make a new patient appointment, a new patient appointment at a new primary care physician for myself. So I go online, you know, like we're talking about, I go to the website, I read about the doctor. Um, some of my neighbors go to this doctor. They just say incredible things about him. So I'm online reading about him, reading the reviews, and then I go to schedule an appointment, a new patient appointment. So I go on there and I look and I see that next week around Wednesday, they have an open appointment for a new patient. I'm so excited. But then I think, well, maybe I better call them because I have some insurance questions I need to ask them. So I do call them on the phone. I'm one of those oldies. I like to talk on the phone sometimes. So I give them a call, give them all my information, yada, yada, yada. They connect me to the appointment coordinator. She gives me an appointment, I kid you not, for five months out. Now, it took everything within me not to blow fire and smoke all over her, but I said, I said, you know, could, could I just ask, I was on your website and it said that you have a new patient appointment next week. So what's the discrepancy? And this is what talking about training, literally she says to me, oh yeah, well, that's wrong. And people book appointments through the website, but then we have to call them back and we have to reschedule them. I'm telling you, there's not a new patient appointment until May. 
Okay, now some of you like your hair is probably standing on end like mine is. Yeah, mine is. It's like what the mine hell? Too. What the hell? Um. Mm -hmm. Anyway, when, when nobody in ministry up. would do that, right? <laughs> Wendy, like, what? When, when, Wendy, I feel your fire. Like I love it. I love it. I, I tell you, I'm really passionate about hey, this. I, if my mom was on this webinar, she would say this. She used to say this to us. Honey, you always know there's three sides to every story. It's her <laughs> side, it's his side, and what really happened. You know, so I always take this, you know, I always want to take a little bit of a step back because really that team member probably doing the best they could under certain circumstances. But really, if you and I went into that office, you'd go, it's not the team member's fault. Like somebody's getting this wrong. So here's my question. This is what I this is where I would start. I would ask, if you're a dentist, listen to this. Write this down. Do you onboard team members or do you waterboard team members? That's pretty good. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like some of you hire someone and you go, go, and they go, where? And you go, up front, go, go, run. And you're in a bar you're getting shot at all day. Like, what, what's going on? Get me out of here, you know? So like real <laughs> requires people get to know what's going on, all that kind of stuff. So listen, I and I am certainly... I have not perfected that at all. I mean, we, we try to pair a champion to new people coming in. They have a mentor, a coach the whole time. Somebody they can go to other than the owner of the business. But here's one thing I would say. You got to look at the whole thing. You know this. Now, let's start with the basic. Whitney, would you agree with this? And David, Amber, would, I, would you agree? When you have the right people in the right seats, that's pretty much all you need in a dental office for the most part. When you have the right people doing the right things in the right seats, it's going to change everything. Well, right seats implies and right things. I mean, they know what to do. So let's start with that. Having the right people changes your life. Having the right chair side assistant changes your life in about 60 seconds. She says to you, get out of here. Let me do this. And you go, where have you been my whole life? You know? <laughs> Having the right hygienist. I won the lottery. <laughs> I won the lottery. Having the right administrative person that's been through Prosperidens, best practices training, and like they can change the financial landscape of your entire life in 30 days, probably raise your fees, not even tell you for six months. And you go, damn, I got a lot of money. I don't even know where the hell all this is coming from. Do you know what I mean? So let's start with that. Investing in the right people, putting in the right seats, giving the right training changes everything. So you got to set it up so that people come in and they can succeed. You got to give them a clear line of sight. On the other hand, hiring is very imperfect. I've made more mistakes and I don't know what the research shows, but new hires, less than half of them make it 18 months for a lot of different reasons. People are professional interviewers. I've had people sit right across from a table and go, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, holy moly, we've hit the jackpot. And then they show up for work and I'm like, where's the person I interviewed? Like, did you, did you have an exorcism? Like, where's, you know, like, oh my gosh, they can't even answer the phone. You know, so um, I like, I don't know who said this, but I adopted this a while back. There's something called the 333 system. This is great. I think one of the things you can do is just get your head straight about bringing new team members on, give them the right training, hire, and then have a 333 system. Here it is. In three days, you got to know this much about the practice. The doctor's name, where the doctor went to school, what the doctor specializes in, the address of the practice. Do you know what I mean? Like, basic stuff that most people would go, I should probably study for this and figure this out in three days. Then in three weeks or three day, uh, three days, three weeks, and three months, three weeks, they should have the basic competencies down. Boom, boom. You put them on a track where they self-select. If somebody doesn't know the name of the doctor, where the doctor went to dental school, like fam, how many children the doctor has, address of the practice, by the end of three days, we can just say, nice meeting you, goodbye. Because if they don't know that at three days, they're certainly not going to be proficient in three months. Three weeks, you can check in, say, hey, three weeks, you got to pass these tests. And then at three months, you should be right here, right here, right here. It becomes the perfect way. Now, here's the other thing. People can raise their hand when they know there's a deadline and they can go, I need some help. And you can go, I like you because you ask questions. You know, so I think there's a certain standard that you have to have. One last thing, and this is probably the hardest one for people to hear. Please write this down. You only hire people for two reasons, not three, not four, not five. You hire people for two reasons. Number one, they fit your core values. Number two, they get results. Don't hire people because they're nice, because they're in your neighborhood. They're a friend of a friend, that, or they work certain hours. You are hiring people to get results. People that are great in an office 
They just know that they get results. So I don't know if that helps, but we're all in the same boat. We all got to create an organization that has some stickiness to it, a place that creates a little passion. And then there's some work you got to do as an entrepreneur. Don't, uh, don't waterboard people, onboard them and give them a chance to succeed in a clear line of sight of how they can see. Oh, one more last thing. Before you do the three, three system, ask them one question. Say, do you want to be successful here? If they say no, it's a bad hire. If they say yeah. yes, you can say, I got a system that shows people make it through the system. It's their three, three, three system. They're very successful. Let me show you how it works. And I know you're going to do really well and I'll support you through the whole thing. So I don't know. I, I don't want to take up too much time. I could talk for an hour on that one, but just a couple thoughts. I'm in the same place as you. I'm wondering what in the world is going on in some of these businesses. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll give her the benefit of the doubt and then I'll call you and let you know how my appointment goes after <laughs> I've been there. Deal. Deal. Uh, uh, in five months, <laughs> I'll let you know how it goes. Um, Anyway, one of the points that we're talking about is being able to communicate effectively with your patients. Um, you should be logged into texting with your patients, um, the reply, the conf confirmations and the replies to that. Um, Teledentistry is also something um, that I know has exploded in orthodontics. I haven't heard much about it in general dentistry. Maybe um, one of you guys can comment on that, but that's really big. Um, and then patients should be able to, to book online. It, it still amazes me sometimes that we work in practices where the patient is commanded or demanded to pick up a phone and call us. I can book an airline ticket to a foreign country and pay for it and just show up on, I can do all of that online, but I can't make a new patient appointment at my doctor's office just to go in for a regular checkup. Um, and then Dave, I think you had some interesting points about what had happened with my experience because the two, um, the softwares or the technologies were not um, intertwined with each other. And that's why one was not speaking to the other. So they didn't know when they had appointments available. Do you want to comment on that? Yeah, I mean, what, whatever online booking engine they had clearly wasn't talking to the actual appointment book, you know, which was which was maintenance in some practice management software somewhere. Um, so somehow they had gotten, you know, they weren't communicating or they'd gotten out of sync because the the stuff that's available to you as a dentist interfaces directly with your practice management software. So it goes to your appointment book and it finds the, open space. And when a patient wants to book online, that's what they're offered. So there was some disconnect if, if, you know, the, the poor woman in the, in the physician's office, Wendy was saying to you, uh, yeah, that's not right. You know, that, that, that system doesn't really, um, actually know what free space we have. Yeah. And, and one thing I want to add to that too, you know, going back to have a good team is, Try to get team members who will also say, hey, doctor, or, or, or whoever's in charge of that, I think this is something we need to, to fix with patients because they're, they're dealing with the repercussion of that. She's dealing with your phone call, Wendy, and, and you know, that's, that's kind of a, a lot for your team members to take on, too. You know, oh, no big deal. They're going to book online. We'll deal with it and call them. So, you know, I think, I think your team members, you know, have, have that communication and, and try to, as a team, set that up as, as a practice so they don't have to deal with that. And let's be clear too, not every patient wants to book their appointment online. There are some, you know, and I, I think there's an age demographic at play here. There are some who really want to be able to pick up the phone and call somebody and they have questions and they want them answered. And then you've got millennials who would not dream of phoning somebody, just exactly what Kirk said a while ago, would not phone somebody if they don't have to and if they can just get online and do it themselves. So I think at this point, we're sort of in a transition between those two groups and they're, they're both big demographically and we just need to be able to cater to both. In other words, if there's no way for uh, you to book online, you're going to lose some people who 
really are pretty insistent that that's how they want to do it. Um, I'm that way with my car. You know, when I take the car in for service, I will only take it to somewhere where I can book the appointment online because I just can't be bothered um, talking to some grease monkey in the in, in, at the garage and, and, and trying to, you know, get them to write down my name and address and phone number correctly. I can type a lot faster than they can listen. Yeah. All right. Yeah, well, I mean, we, uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, you know, we have to have a really multifaceted approach on how we communicate. And going back to that slide, Dave, I just kind of wanted to point out, you know, when I was a hygienist, I used to get asked, by other hygienists, oh, what's your favorite tool that you use on patients? And what's the most important thing that's made your hygiene department successful? And my number one most important tool at that time, I use Yappy, which is a, a yeah. software that can directly text your patients. And myself as a hygienist, I could directly text my patients if I had an opening or I wanted to check on them. And my response would be less than three to five minutes. If I had an opening, I could get them right in for that opening. And patients really liked that it came from me personally. <clears throat> and I'd have my name or I'd, I'd have like a little joke about the patient. You know, how was the wedding last weekend with your, with your niece? You know, stuff that I knew was going on. And, hey, if you want to come in today instead of tomorrow, we'd have more time to clean your teeth and talk about life, which is more important. And then I'd put my name on it and stuff. And honestly, as a hygienist, that was my strongest tool for yeah. success was being able to instantly communicate with my patients. Great to know. All right, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll bring Mr. Barrett back one more time. Um, Kirk, we're, we're kind of getting low on time, but if you had to tell the audience one thing that they should do to I make... got two hours worth of stuff prepared here to... Yeah, Dave. talk no, fast, no. buddy. No, no, no. I, I want to be respectful of everyone's time. And I'll just share with this. You know, you talk about tools. I love what you're saying. The single most important tool... All right, let me start with this. A lot of this is overwhelming. Like, I get it. Sometimes as a dentist, you're like, oh my gosh, this is just too much to think about. I've been working with patients. Like, it's just a lot to think about. The single most important thing you've ever learned about dentistry that makes you a better dentist is your ability to diagnose then treatment plan before you actually do the dentistry. You'll find as you age, mature, and learn how to do that, it's going to make it better and better. And every time you're going to plan three times before you cut once or four times, whatever it may be, that principle applies to your business. The single most important thing I do, I'll tell you guys what I can do every day. Here's my backpack. So I carry my backpack into work and I have two things in it that are worth gold. The first one is a spiral notebook. So this is my... And I basically have them for the month of January. So whenever I take a course, have notes, I got them. This is January. So if I ever think of something or I got it right here and I can get these thoughts out of my head. The second one, this is my goal. I have a clear sheet of paper and it's called the one page strategic plan. These are our goals. I won't show you what's on them, but like what we're doing this quarter, our core values, our plan and our priorities. Now here's the key. The biggest companies in the world have used an operating system like traction, like scaling up, like the Rockefeller habits. You're talking about Fortune 500 companies. Most of them only have three to five priorities per quarter, not 10. And I'll tell you why that's important to me. I'm an entrepreneur. I think everything's important. I used to have a list of 92 things to accomplish. But what I didn't understand was I used to exhaust everybody around me all the time because I had a new idea. And they're like, we're still working on the one you gave us three weeks ago. Now I've learned you just get laser focused on the three to five things you want to do for the next 90 days. It's 13 weeks, guys, 13 weeks. Would you agree it's better to get three to five things done over 13 weeks and watch a team celebrate, we got those done, then try to do 92 poorly. Now what happens is this, they believe in themselves and I'll tell you, the goals get bigger. When they go, we did it. They always go, I think we could do a little bit more. And then you go, really? What do you mean by that? It's so cool when that happens. And I'll tell you why this is important to me. I'm an eye on the disc profile. I love talking to people. I bright, shiny objects are exciting. Technology, love it. I'm all over it. Every day I come in, take a deep breath, and I tell myself, just stick to the paper. Just stick 
to the paper. And my team members, when they want to put a knife in my neck because I'm like getting crazy or whatever, I'm joking, but like, they're like, mm. they always say, just stick to the paper. So my encouragement to you is this, break up your business into small pieces. Over a quarter, all of us can work better on fewer priorities. And I'll also tell you, the brain likes simple. The things that I have on here, my kids could understand. And you can all work together better when you have three priorities instead of 92. So that, and I've got a copy of it. I don't know where I would share it, but I, I could share a copy that's a template. You guys can use it. Just use it. Fill it in. You get stuck. It's the single most important tool I use every single day. If you ever see me, ever, in an airport, someone go, let me see your one page. I'll pull it out and I'll go, you can look at it for a minute, but I need it back because it's my passage to sanity. So thank you guys for having me. Hey, wonderful to have you here. Well, we've, we've got a few minutes left and uh, certainly if anybody has a, a question, use the, use the question form on, uh, um, on Zoom and we'd love to answer them. And I'll just, I'll, yeah. If somebody wants a template, I'll just put it right here. You guys can have it. I don't care. Okay. Um, we, we usually do a, um, we, we have a follow-up message, that, an automated one that goes out about right. now. Even better. Um, but uh, I'll, I'll be happy to send one to the participants, uh, you know, tomorrow or next week, Kirk, with, uh, with how, how to get that. Perfect. Um, that'd be awesome. Thank you. I'm, I'm kind of interested in seeing it myself. My pleasure. All right. Yeah. Um, All right. You know, uh, Oh, I'm sorry, Amber, go ahead. Uh, yeah, we just had a, a response from a, a ten, an audience member that said they would love to see the one page. Okay. Now, I yep. won't show you what's on mine, but I'll give you the template. You can just <laughs> fill it in. The template would okay. be perfect. Awesome. Perfect. Okay, uh, thanks. Any other questions that came up that we want to uh, we want to talk well, you know, about? Um, I just have a comment. Um, I My friend Jerry is, was on the uh, webinar and she was texting me. Yeah. And she was pointing out to me that um, since so many offices were closed during COVID and they had to lay off their staff, a lot of the doctors or business owners were going through their books, um, maybe just trying to figure out how they're going to survive while they're having no production, um, as well as just having the opportunity to examine the condition of their business. And they've just found so many things that are messed up in their books and, and the doctors are aware of that. And, you know, we were talking about buried treasure and that one slide, what an excellent opportunity to go back and to find those areas where you can create production for that. And I will say um, one thing about Prosperident is that during the closure of the offices because of COVID, we have been so, so busy. It's like we just ramped up um, because that's exactly what's happening. Yeah. Um, clients were going through their books and they were finding things that just didn't make sense. And they were looking at transactions because they finally had the time to slow down and pay attention to what's happening with their accounting um, ledger. Yeah, they'd, and they furloughed staff and they were, they were doing yeah. things themselves that traditionally their staff would have yeah. done. Um, yeah. yeah, there was a lot going on. And I mean, we've, we've spent most of today talking about how to make your practice better and you know how to bring in more money. Let's not lose sight of the other part, which is how to keep some of that. Right. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's great to move your productivity from uh, 1.6 million to 1.8 million. You know, that's, that's a wonderful accomplishment if you can do it. However, if you have an embezzler and the embezzler says, well, great, I can reach my hand a little deeper into the doctor's pocket now. Right. Um, I'm not sure what you really accomplished with all that. Right. And I want to add one thing too. I think what you guys do is phenomenal at Prosperity. And if you're a dentist, you might be thinking, I don't know if I want to do this because like Judy's been up there at the front for like 30 years. I mean, I mean, it's going to be like, I don't trust her. And so we have to differentiate between what trust and verification is. And as a business owner, you just have yourself. Now, let me just, I can't help you with that conversation, but I can help you with one piece. It's the term accountability. Accountability requires accounting. The best team members you will ever have, ever love accountability. They love it. They enjoy it. 
the least favorite ones you'll ever have. They don't want to be held accountable for anything. Accountability is not trust. It's call. It requires accounting. I have three teenage daughters. They say, you don't trust us. You don't trust. Oh, I trust you, honey. I'm just going to verify that you got home when you were supposed to be home. Does that make sense? Because yeah. if I don't verify, they'll come home an hour later or two hours later or not at all if I'm not that kind of a dad. So it's not bad, good, or indifferent. I just want to help you understand as a business owner, accountability is extremely healthy. What if your kids went to school and there was no accountability and your teacher goes, no, we don't do grades here. Everybody gets a medal and a star. You'd go, I got to get my kid out of this school fast. I need a grade. You know what I mean? Type of thing. So I don't know. Kirk, Kirk, what you said was just so profound. And, and I'm going to quote a dear friend of mine whose name happens to be Amber Weber, um, who once said uh, that uh, accountability is the first casualty of embezzlement. Tell me more. I want to know where that came from. Tell me a little bit more because that's a very cool statement. Actually, I'm going to write that one down. Okay, yeah. go. <laughs> tell me where you got that from and tell me, give us some context. Where I got that from? Yeah, I love that. Here's the funny thing about me, Kirk. All of my sayings come from cows and horses. Okay? <laughs> so There's I a lot of good right lessons now. there. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, so most of my stories come from, you know, where did the cow go? go? What neighbor stole it? It has my brand on it. Like that whole, the whole verification. So that's, that's where majority of that, my, my stories come from, but it's interesting that you're, that you remembered that Dave. Huh. Well, that, that. that stuck with me like glue. And I've, I've quoted that many times um, because yeah. what Amber says is you go into an office and, and, Whoever is responsible for the money is is fighting accountability. And I think the other word, Amber, that you used at the time was transparency, you know, which those two probably are are, are pretty tightly intertwined. Um, you yeah. know, when you, you know, when you get opacity as opposed to transparency from somebody at the front desk, you know, that's when you really have to be wary. And and I think that's where it, that's where it was coming from. Well, and that really came from, you know, when I was a kid, if we took our cows to the pasture, we had to be very, like, this is how many cattle we turned out, and right to the number and to the T, you know, because if we went out there and it was off, I mean, I was accountable. My dad was like, well, you said you turned 42 head out here, and there's only 40, 41 or 39, you know, what happened to this one? And so I, I had a lot of accountability, and I had to remember it, write it all down, present it to him. Um, so that's where a lot of that comes from. Love that. Amber, you are fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, did you talk about cows and horses? <laughs> it is. It's all about cows and horses. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you, can learn, you can learn a lot from that. those animals. Uh, yeah. Oh my gosh, and I and I see our good friend Wayne Kerr, Dr. Wayne Kerr is, is Wayne's awesome. Is is on here. Um, he is one of my favorite guys anywhere, and um, I hope I won't offend him when I say that he is he he reminds me totally of the six volt radio plugged into a nine volt battery. <laughs> he, he he's he's uh, he's he, he's a senior citizen and proud of it, and and he is such an energetic, uh, enthusiastic guy that you you just have to love him. So uh, great to have you on board. Great All right. Man. Well, folks, uh, we're at time. Uh, let's see. I think I think one last question came. Oh, it's Wayne saying thanks so much. Yeah. Uh, you are you are um, a, a gift to humanity, Wayne. And uh, I am I am so pleased to know you. Um, all right. Well, I'd, I'd love to thank our very special guest, Kirk. You uh, I, I think if you hadn't met him or encountered him before, um, spending a little bit of, of time with him today. You understand exactly why we, we, we love him here and he's one of our favorite guys. Um, and um, I'll just put his, uh, his picture and email address up there one more time if you like what you've heard and you want to uh, uh, get access to that, uh, that absolute cornucopia of knowledge, that's how you do it. Um, and uh, finally, I'd say um, if, if you enjoyed tonight, uh, there's the link to leave us a review. We'd love to have a five-star review from you. We talked about how important Google reviews are. So 
um, help us out if, if you're so inclined. And uh, finally, there's a, there's a picture of some of our team and you'll see the blonde bookends there. Uh, Amber's at one end and Wendy's at the other and I'm somewhere in the middle. Um, that's, uh, that's, that's about half our team. Uh, but that, that was a, a meeting a couple of years ago and uh, I, I, I keep going back to that picture. Anyway, we're back in a little less than a month and we're gonna talk about how to find that perfect employee. We did a webinar a while ago about how to avoid the worst hiring mistake of your life. And really we were talking about how people who embezzle get jobs that they shouldn't. Well, next month is gonna be a lot more positive and we're gonna talk about how to find that right person. So we'd love to see you back in a month. Uh, thanks for spending some time with us tonight and enjoy the, what's, what's left of your evening. Good night, everyone, and thanks. Bye. Thank Have you, guys. Night. This concludes this episode of the Prosperident webinar series. The team will be back soon with more tools and ideas. If you have questions about this webinar, if you would like to discuss your practice with one of us, or if there is a topic you would like to see in a future webinar, we would love to hear from you. You can contact Prosperident through its website, www.prosperident.com, or by calling 888-398-2327.